Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about operators. C++ has several types of operators, but in this chapter, I want to focus on the logic on the logical operators, and after that, we'll go into relational ones. Uh, you have arithmetic operators like addition, multiplication, and division. We already know them, and they have pretty much the same meaning. Uh, well, maybe perhaps not the precedence, but they are very similar in terms of what they do as opposed to the logical operators that I wanted to show you now. So, arithmetic operators, right? I have plus, multiply, divide, etc. Those you know and those you are familiar with, so there's no need to like go all over them. Again, obviously division and multiplication have precedence over addition and subtraction. Pretty much the same things that apply in math apply here as well. So same rulings. Anyway, let's go ahead and create our main. And we're going to put a Boolean variable here. Bool, and we're just going to name this one A. And we shall state that A is true. We will in the, keep in mind that regardless that this is not a number or a string or something like that, this is a keyword and it says true. It can also be, instead of true, I can also write false. Instead of false, I can write zero. And instead of true, I can write one. Everything that is zero is evaluated as false. Everything that is basically greater than zero is evaluated as true. So, but you can also use true. For example, in Java, uh, you cannot use zero and one. You need to use true and false, or so it was. I haven't used Java in a while, so don't hold my word. Don't hold my word for that. You can go ahead and check it for yourselves if you want. Anyway, I have stated that the boolean variable, that the variable a of type bool boolean, is tr is initialized to true because boolean variables can only have two values. They can either be true or they can be false. There is no third option. And I shall also initialize b, but we can basically go to a. We can go like this, b equals, and we shall also say, we shall also state that b is true, true, and, oops, sorry, need a comma here, a, b, c, and we shall state that the c is false, I don't have anything against c, but we shall state that c is false, and one more, we'll just name d, so A, B, C, D, I'm just putting them in an alphabetical order, no big deal. I don't need any particular names for these variables. I just need to name them. That's pretty much it. So we have declared and initialized four Boolean variables. Three of those are true and one of those is false. Now we shall go ahead and take up, we will need to use them in order to demonstrate the, the functionality of logical operators. Logical and operator is represented with two and percent signs. Uh, like this. So if you have another, sorry, pool, and we can name this one and one. We haven't, bro we have not broken the naming convention with this. I've already explained it, how you can name the variables. So you can use numbers in naming, in naming your variables. We shall say a n percent n percent sign b colon. So a is true, right? A equals true, and b equals true. So what do you believe? What do you think that the, the the value of this variable will be? What do you think that the value of this boolean will be? Will it be true or false? Well, if this one is true, and this one is true, then it, then the then the expression is evaluated as true. So, anyway, uh, let's take a look at another one. So, in order, just just one more time, in order for this expression to be true, both a and b need to be true. If a or b are false, uh, then this entire expression will be evaluated as false. So we shall name this one and two. 
equals a and percent and percent b oops and percent and oops and ah and percent and percent c and and percent and percent d now i want you to take a look at this expression and i would like you to tell yourselves well you obviously can't tell me <laughs> i am quite some distance away or maybe not i don't know where you are but I want you to figure out what is the value of bool and two. Is it true or is it false? So it doesn't matter that we have multiple multiple variables in the line aligned up here and that this is longer than this. Completely irrelevant. Same rules apply. All of these variables need to evaluate as true in order for this express in order for this boolean to be true as well. Is that the case? No, it is not. C is false. So C equals false. Henceforth, this entire line will be evaluated as false and and 2 will have the value of false. But there is something else that you should keep in mind. Uh, A and percent and percent B is evaluated first. Okay, that's fine. B and percent and percent C is evaluated second. And this is going to evaluate as false. Once this evaluates as false, the evaluation will not continue past this. So D will not even be taken into consideration, which saves a considerable amount of time, which is very nice. And processing and processing time, that is. So it will come to here, and then there is no longer any point or reason to move on as there is nothing that will actually change this. This will, this this entire expression with or without D, with N percents will be evaluated to false as one of the, one of the segments is false. Therefore, the entire line will be evaluated as false. And this variable will be given a value of false. Okay, now that that is done. I know, I, I know that, uh, it, that it can seem a little bit boring or something like that. I am really sorry for that. Nothing I can do about it. I need to teach you these things. If you do not understand these basic things, you will definitely not be able to understand some of the more advanced concepts that we move into as we make our progression through C++. Because these are the basic, these are the foundations. Without this, it's very difficult to move on. Because you're going to see a billion expressions containing Booleans and logical operators and you will see them branching on end, etc. And you need to be able to basically, when you see it, you need to be able to read it and know immediately what it is, what it represents for, what it represents, what it does. So let's move on. Next up, we have the logical or operator. So and, and, and or, and not, there are basically the three basic ones, the, 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 the logical operator. So you have and or not. There are some other ones, but we're not going to get into them now. For the time being, I just want you to learn these three. And, or, not. So next up is or. You can have bool or one equals. So I just want to demonstrate how these things work. So you can see, see, pipe pipe represents or. So pipe pipe represents or. D, my colon, and bool uh or two a up oh, sorry a a or or d or or b so this is this is evaluated from left so from left to the right that is the order in which it goes uh for or only one of the condition only one of these uh, variables or expressions that can be placed needs to be true so if c or d is true it is completely irrelevant what the other one is this entire thing will be evaluated as true and likewise it stands here if only one of these is true the entire expression will be evaluated as true 
So that is that is basically the logic of or. So you can have A or B or D or C and so on and so forth. But if only one of them is true, uh, it will the 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 it will they will result in a true value, so to say. Also, once once it checks uh, C here, it will check D as well. Once it checks A here, it will not check anything else. <laughs> there is. Uh, there is really no need to evaluate the others because if only one is true, it's going to be true. If the first one here is false, okay, there is a possibility that it's false because D could be false as well, so it's going to need to check the D as well. But since A is true, there is no need to check the rest at all. Okay, so now, before we go into not, let's go ahead and take a look at and one more time and has a higher precedence than or. So it is, how shall I put this? It is ahead in the line as opposed to or. It's more important than or, to put it in, a, to put it in more simpler terms. So let's, let's create our Boolean variable and, un, oops, underline or one. This shall be equal to A, and percent, and percent B, and we shall have this C. Of course, you can configure the priority as you choose and please with parentheses, and you can put into parentheses whatever you want to be evaluated first. The same, same rules apply with arithmetic operators, like you, if you have three plus, I don't know, two times five, times three, okay, times five, uh, two times five will happen first, and then on to that three will be added. So the result will be thirteen. But you can basically you can basically do this. You can put this in a parentheses, and you can say now, okay, regardless of the precedence of this operator, I would like you to add three plus two first. Which is which is five, and then multiply it by five, which will mean that the result is twenty-five. So you can do pretty much the same things here. You can configure the precedence of the op of the of the entire line. So which segment of the line, which operations would you like to be done first with the parentheses? However, placing it like this in a clean line without manually configure without manually configuring what you would like to be executed first is basically gonna this is basically gonna evaluate the n percent first and then the or part will happen now look a n percent n percent b will be evaluated and then it will the result of a n percent n percent b will be stated or c so Let's put it like this. A and percent and percent B. So A is true and B is true. So therefore this is going to be true. And C, what is C? C is false. So false. It's basically true or false. What will this evaluate to? This will evaluate to basically true because for or only one needs to be true in order for the entire expression to be true. And I made a small mistake here. Somewhere up here, basically, uh, this goes into or, and then the result of this goes into or with B. Same with this. Uh, a and B, n percent, n percent, and then the result of this goes into n percent with C, and then the result of all of that goes into n percent with D. My bad there, sorry. Made a small error, but no big deal. Okay, so let's move on. You also have some you also have something like this, just so that the just so that the sequential order of these things does not confuse you. The way I have written them, it doesn't actually doesn't actually change doesn't actually uh, doesn't actually matter that much. If I write C and percent uh, pipe pipe A and percent and percent here B and percent and percent C and percent and percent D, so this is going to be 
false because it is the same as basically doing this. So let me just show you. This entire thing, this in, this entire thing can be put down to basically this. You copy this. Well, you don't need to do this. I'm just going to do this for demonstrative purposes. You put it like this. And then you put uh, parentheses around it. Mm -hmm. There we go. And this is going to evaluate to what? So A and B is true. True and C, which is false. So true and false is basically false. Okay, so this is false. And C is false. So it's basically false. False. Ah. And percent. Ah, sorry. Pipe, pipe. False. So, yep, there we go. Let me just format it a little bit for you. This entire expression comes down to false or false. One of these falses is basically this expression and the other one is C. So C is false, so false, or this entire expression false will yield false. And this, the value of this variable will be false. Simple enough, isn't it? No, no, no need to, even if you don't understand this to the fullest of extents, it is still okay. I mean, you can look it up on the net, you can ask a question in the discussion section, but also there will be plenty of other examples through the code itself that is not perhaps directly related to this. So you'll be able to pick it up from there without bigger problems as well. So it will be repeated a good amount of times through the code indirectly. Anyway, there is a one more operator which I wish to go over and then we are going to call it a day, but I'm running out of time, so I will do this in the follow-up tutorial in part two of the of the uh, of the logical operands.